Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. Well, Friday the 13th has come and gone and it ended with me earning my Red Hat Certified Engineer certification. And I am totally stoked about that. I'm, I'm glad that I went through the exam process. I'm glad it's over and I'm thrilled that I was able to pass the exam. And so as promised, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about my experience with the exam. There are limitations to what I can tell you about just because of the NDA or non-disclosure agreements that you have to sign as a part of any Red Hat exam, which is probably true for pretty much any IT exam, but I'll, I'll at least be able to kind of give you the, the environment that, that, that I had to, to work with and, and work under for the exam. I'm also going to give you a couple of tips for taking the exam. And these, these tips honestly are kind of born out of my own experience with, with the exam itself. So it might work for you. It might not. Hopefully it, it will. Before I dive in, I do want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video, as well as invite you, if you haven't subscribed yet, to click that subscribe button and ring the bell when you do, so you can be notified of when new content is available. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you click like and feel free to share it with others. So the exam itself was four hours of absolute stress. And I'm not saying that to frighten you from the exam, but I'm just giving you the, the reality of it. For the exam, I took all of my four hours of time with it. Uh, there was one break that I took about, um, about two hours in, in, into the exam. Uh, it was a quick little restroom break. And that total time was maybe about four minutes because, you know, if you're doing the, the, the remote exam as I am, you know, if you come back from a break, your proctor has to, to do the procedures they must do to help make sure the testing environment is still secure. So with my break and them having to do the, the things they need, it took about four minutes of time. And then up until really the last 20 minutes of the four hour block, I, I was, I was actively working with problems and trying to find solutions and such. So um, don't, don't be afraid if it takes you a, a, a long time with, with, with the exam. I think it, it's kind of designed to be that. So that being said, this was by far the most difficult IT exam I have taken. Now I haven't taken a, a ton of certifications. I did the uh, Cisco CCNA stuff uh, a couple of years ago when, when I was finishing up with my technical college education and thought I would be doing more stuff on networking. I took, what was it? LPI Linux Essentials. That was a pretty easy exam. And I took network plus way back when, and of course I took RHCSA and passed it. But of those exams, this was the most difficult. And it was not only difficult from a technical perspective, because I mean, you can look at the publicly available objectives and know that there's some relatively difficult stuff there and you have to do it within the context of Ansible, either writing playbooks or ad hoc commands and that kind of thing. But the mental challenge of the exam honestly was probably more difficult than the, the, the technical challenge. Just being that focused for, for four hours to, to, to get through it is, is, is pretty tough. I mean, at the, at the end of the exam, I, my, my hands were shaking and I wasn't shaking because I was afraid of the exam. I, I felt pretty good about the things that I did, but I think it was just the sheer stress and, and concentration required for the exam. Just it, it, it'll, it'll take a, a, physical toll on you. As a matter of fact, I, I took, um, actually took two days off from work. I took the, the day before. And if you're in it, the reason why I did that was because I didn't want to have stuff breaking at work while I'm there the day before that spills into the exam day. And then obviously I took the exam day itself off just because at, at, at the end of that four hours, I, there was no way I could be a, a productive worker after that. I just, I, I had to, to have some type of break and recovery from it. Now that all sounds real negative, but it really isn't negative as far as it's just the, the, the exam experience it, it, It's a tough exam and, and it's, it's challenging both technically and, and mentally. Um, my overall experience was, was positive though. You know, the, the re remote exam environment worked well for me. My proctor was a, a, a reasonable person. You know, there, there, there were a couple of questions that, that, that I had as far as my environment and as far as, you know, can have this or that on your desk. I had a, uh, I, I was allowed to have my little tumbler of water and I had a little, um, bowl of, uh, crackers just because, you know, your, your brain eats a lot of calories. And so I, I munched on that a little bit during the test. Proctor was fine with that. I had to hold up my little bowl of crackers for inspection, which seems kind of silly, but I, I totally understand from a test security perspective that, that, that they have to look at everything. I did have one thing occur. And of course I can't give you 
you know, details about it because of NDA, but basically I have some extra buttons on my mouse that I mainly use for the push to talk function within a Discord server. And I managed to click one. I'm not quite sure how, maybe my hand slipped or something, and that broke my connection to the remote exam, which of course that freaked me out because I'm like, holy crap, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I, I can't go on. But I was able to get back to like the like better phrase, like the landing page that you use to get into your exam environment. And once, once I was able to click that, the, 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 the proctor you know, admitted me back to the exam and said, Hey, I lost you. And my response was, yeah, I had a, a, a brief heart attack for a moment. And the, and the proctor said, you know, nothing was lost. You know, you, you may resume your exam, please continue. So they, they were, they were really cool about just, Hey, glad you're back. Here's your exam. Keep going rather than, than complaining that I, 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 I broke my connection to the exam. So the lesson learned there, if something does happen with your exam, you know, try not to panic, do what you need to do to, 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 to get connected back in. And the proctors are probably just you know happy that, that, that you're able to reconnect. So other than that one mishap, um, it, it, it was a smooth experience. My exam environment didn't have any problems as far as like just stuff not working. You know, sometimes you'll hear horror stories about, well, my exam environment wouldn't load and all this. I didn't have any, any issues with that. Now, also I was the only person in, in my, in my home at that time, my girlfriend was, was at work. And so there, there was nothing taxing my, my network at all. So I, I do recommend if you are in an environment where there's multiple people in your home, you know, ask them to, you know, not be on your network during that time to where, you know, you in the exam, you, you have your full bandwidth of connection for that. So a couple of other tips that, that I think might be helpful for you first deals with time management. And this, this was a challenge for me within the exam. And I'm actually kind of surprised it was a challenge because I think I managed time pretty well with, with RHCSA, but since this exam is based off of Ansible and Ansible is obviously going to involve writing playbooks and writing playbooks is very similar to, to doing some scripting stuff. It's easy, at least easy for me to lose track of time in my uh, current job. You know, I'm doing my windows administration stuff and I'm having to write PowerShell and I, I enjoy writing PowerShell and it's almost to the point of, I could kind of get lost in a script of, all right, so I need to do this thing, but there are all, all sorts of ways I can handle this problem. What's the most elegant way of doing it? And the problem with that is, you know, I could be working on something and then blink and an hour has gone by. Well, if you're on a timed exam, that's an issue because you need to obviously you know, get all of your stuff done. So my advice on that is if, if you're like me and when you're in that, in the zone of scripting, you know, time can get away from you, make sure that you have your exam timer on the screen. I had to do that several times just to keep myself on track to where I, I wouldn't, you know, be overdoing what, whatever the, the, solution is. That being said, that, that goes into, in, into my, my next tip, which is do not over engineer your, your answers to the objectives. Now, of course you have to do things to whatever the specification of the objective is, but I, I can neither confirm nor, nor deny if they actually care about the how, but even, even Red Hat, ex, even on the objectives for Red Hat, it's basically, we're going to be running your playbooks against the environment and looking to see if the environment is going to be configured the way it needs to be configured. So that being said, if you have the choice of, you know, doing not necessarily a sloppy job, but a just get it working versus figure out the most elegant looping mechanism or whatever it is that, 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 that you would need. Just remember the end eyes on the prize, right? The end goal is that your, your thing works and is configured correctly. Not that it's, you know, the most brilliant way to, to, to do that. So the next tip I have is to do testing as, as you go with the exam. And I say that because I got to the last 20 minutes of the exam or so, and I, I'd finished my objectives. And if I had waited until that point to test, you know, playbooks and, and, and the like, there would be no way that I could have tested all that stuff for, for, for the exam. And so as you're having to write playbooks, and of course saying you're writing playbooks is not breaking in the, a, the objectives themselves say you will be writing playbooks. I, I will be running those playbooks and, and doing some, some troubleshooting and, and verifying that, that they configure whatever it is that, that needs to be configured correctly. And I think one good thing about that is it kind of allows you to completely check off the, whatever the objective is, and you don't necessarily have to, to, to come back to it. Now, the other side of that is 
if you're, you know, if you have some objective and it's just taking forever and, 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 and things aren't working, it is wise to move on to, to, to another theme. Because remember, let's say that you only had five objectives on the exam. Of course, I can't tell you the number of objectives I, I had, but, um, let's say you only had five and it is better to get four of the objectives done really well than get stuck on objective number two and, never finish the, 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 the other three, you know, that way, you know, you only fail on one objective rather than failing on, uh, three objectives because you stuck with number two for, for so long. So that kind of goes back into your time management as well. The other tip would be to read all of the objectives before you start working. And I did this with, with RHCSA and it was pretty effective because it is entirely possible. And again, I can't, um, confirm or, or uh, deny that I had had this within my objectives, but it's entirely possible that you'll have objectives that that depend on one another. Like let's say that you have something that is you know um, build and LVM um, or logical volume, and the instructions for the logical volume are use these particular partitions. Well, if those partitions haven't been made yet, then obviously, you know, you, 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 you would have to do that. And you might have objectives that, that, that are kind of like that, that, that have to depend on one another. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to go in order of the objectives as, as they're presented, but I think it's wise to, to, to read through them all to see how some may or, 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 or may not work together for you. The last tip I have, and this this is going to sound super cliche, but it's don't give up. And I say that because in the last 30 minutes of the, of the exam, I still had a, a couple of things I needed to do. And um, and I, I had a couple of moments of despair. Like there is no way I can I can get, get through these things. My brain is done. I can't think of, of any other solutions. And I kid you not, I kind of sat there and I was, I was saying to myself, you got to keep pushing. You have to keep going. Keep trying. Do something. Don't, don't just stop. And, and after a, a minute or so, you know, I, I, I breathed a little bit and my, my freak out ended and, and I was able to finish the exam and obviously I, um, passed the, the, the exam, but for, for you with, with, with the exam, if you have those moments of despair, you just, you, you, you got to keep pushing through it. And, and remember that it is better to try to get as much of that exam done as, as you can well, than just get stuck on, on a couple of things with, with trying to, to figure it out. But overall, my, my exam experience was positive despite the stress. The, the, the key takeaway for, for, for the exam and the certification is what skills are you learning with this? And I, I always say that's, that's my point of doing certification. It is not necessarily to earn the cert, but is to learn the skill. And then if you get the cert at the end, that's the added bonus. Well, obviously, you know, if you do the work to prepare for the cert and learning the skill, you obviously want to get the cert at the end. So even if I had failed RHCE, I would take it again to, to, to try to pass. But I can say with 100% fact from a year ago, which is when I um, started my training for RHCE shortly after RHCSA, I went from zero knowledge of Ansible other than knowing that Ansible exists to being able to write playbooks and be confident that I can go into an Ansible environment and I'm tasked to work with stuff in production and I would be able to either figure it out or already have the base knowledge to just jump in with whatever's um, going on. So even if I did fail the exam, I'm, I believe I got value out of the certification in the fact that I have earned the, or earned, I have develop the skill that I in, intended to develop by doing the certification. So if you're kind of on the fence about RHCE and if you're interested in learning Ansible, I say do it because it's, it, it is, it's not the only way to learn Ansible, obviously, but I think sometimes it helps, especially if you're coming from a position like I was in where I had no knowledge of Ansible, it helps kind of having that structured guide of these are the important things that you need to know about Ansible and following that will, will get you the, the base knowledge that, that I think you, you need to be able to function. So again, I want to, um, thank you for taking the time to watch. I want to thank my returning subscribers. And I also want to thank everyone that, um, that left a, a couple notes on, on, on some of my previous videos, some, um, good luck for the exam. It, it, it means a lot to me to, to, to have that 
support. And so I, I thank you for that. If you did enjoy this video, make sure that, that you do click like and uh, feel free to, to share it with others. All of the practice session videos that I recorded prior to the exam, I'm going to start going through the editing process of, of those, trying to fix some of the audio and such, and I'll have those published you know, as, as I get to them. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do click that subscribe button and ring the bell, so that way when I get these practice session videos finished, you'll, you'll be notified of when they're published on the channel. Thanks again for taking the time to watch, and I'll see you the next time.